For more than 30 years in this gallery, the Wheelwright Museum of the American Indian has conducted a changing exhibition program on contemporary and traditional Native American arts that has now become world famous. I'm Jonathan Batkin. I've been director of the Wheelwright Museum since 1990, and I would like to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about our program and about the need for our planned expansion. The museum's exhibition program is unlike that in most museums. We originate every exhibition which is deeply interpretive and for which we borrow almost everything we exhibit. In the time I've been here, we've borrowed thousands of objects from hundreds of museums and private collectors all over the United States and Canada for this program. Many, many famous Native American artists of the United States have had their first major museum exhibitions here. The early days also was a time of uh, incredible insight. I, I saw a lot of um, um, important shows that were happening, happening in Santa Fe at the time, and uh, the Wheelwright Museum had some of those important shows. Uh, one of them that I remember that really inspired me was uh, the retrospective by T.C. Cannon. T.C. Cannon was one of my mentors. He was a person who I really looked up to, and they had a retrospective of his work. For anybody to put an exhibition of his work together, uh, the Wheelwright was the place. Jonathan Batkin, the director of the Wheelwright, contacted me with the possibility of doing a show. I've never done anything like this ever in my life, so I jumped at the chance. And I know there was a lot of preparation. Their space is not very big, so they had to really design it well so that they could accommodate all the paintings that were coming their way. There was a lot. There was like over 50 paintings. The catalog that we published was of such a significant size. I was involved in the designing process with Jonathan, and he had an interesting uh, idea of taking from the interviews uh, little snippets that made up the quotations of each of the pieces that we both chose together. It did a tremendous amount for my career. I've had tons of people from all over the United States, uh, even Europe, contact me. Hello, my name is Leatrice Armstrong. I'm the assistant to the director at the Wheelwright Museum of the American Indian. One of the goals in this current capital campaign is to bring the museum back to the sharp, crisp lines that William Penn Hallow Henderson designed. We will be able to do this by removing the current layer of stucco that was applied in the 70s and bring it back not only to those sharp lines, but also the beautiful brown earthen tone that was the original building. The Wheelwright Museum was founded by two individual people, Mary Cabot Wheelwright, for whom the museum is now named, and Hostine Claw, a Navajo Hitathli, or singer. The museum is shaped as a stylized hogan and has several features that are reminiscent of a traditional hogan on a Navajo reservation. The museum was founded in 1937 and was originally named the House of Navajo Religion. The museum was dedicated at that time to Navajo ceremonial arts. Within two years of its founding, the museum's name changed to the Museum of Navajo Ceremonial Arts, and that's what the name was until the 1970s. Originally, when you walked into the building, you went down a flight of stairs and came back up into the gallery. The gallery had on its walls eight foot by eight foot paintings that were renderings of sand paintings used in the various ceremonies. These could be changed depending on which ceremony the museum curator wanted to exhibit. In the center of the floor, there was a sand painting done specifically for the museum. In the mid-1970s, our board of trustees determined that the items that we had collected, not only Hostine Claw's information and other Hitathli's information, sand paintings that had been drawn by other individuals and included in the collection, were more appropriate to be given back to the Navajo Nation. And so we became the first museum to voluntarily repatriate items by returning the large eight foot by eight foot paintings and other ceremonial items. It's something that we're very proud of. With that change of focus, our museum started to deal with single individual artist shows featuring contemporary Native American artists, as well as also providing exhibitions that showcase historical items. One of the um, unique things about the Wheelwright and the way that we manage our collections is that we try to be um, particularly accessible. 
we have you know sort of medicine men kind of in training who come to look at Hostian Claus material and to use um, um, archives relating to that that sort of thing. We have other kinds of researchers who come in and use you know, John Adair's collection, George Pepper's collection, Washington Matthews collection, and we hope to be maybe less formal than, than other places as far as, as just being able to let somebody really kind of have the access that they need to materials. And I'm here researching these historic photos of the Okeawenge slash San Juan Pueblo. In fact, I'm here upon the invitation of the executive director who heard about the work I was doing at Okeawenge and said, well, in fact, we've got this great George Pepper book with photographs he'd taken in 1903 and you're welcome to come scan them and use them for your project. So the open access and the availability of first-hand access to the archives is fantastic. From our standpoint, it, it's more enjoyable for us if we can provide access and feel like people are really kind of using the archives. To take advantage of these photographs taken in 1903, we can actually place in time the way the Pueblo looked and reconstruct it in the computer, essentially, because what we're trying to do with the Pueblo itself is to rehab the historic core and get people living there again. We like to be able to focus on living artists. We enjoy being able to work with them as they determine which items from their portfolios they want to collect, they want to exhibit. We love being able to work with them because they can be as involved as they want. I spend most of my time thinking about what it is uh, I want to do, how to go about making it, and uh, especially as I get older, what kind of people I work with. Jonathan Batkins asked me to be a part of a figurative exhibit uh, several years ago called Clay People, and Roxanne Swinsel and Virgil Ortiz was a part of it. That's when I became involved with the wheelwright. I wasn't going to do the clay people uh, exhibit because I wanted a challenge and I wanted a change. I expressed that and so Jonathan Batkins allowed me to make a video um, which really added a completely different component, opened a couple of doors for me in terms of what I wanted to do in my creative process. So instead of just creating something in my studio and then bringing it end a story, I became much more engaged in the other artist process. I became much more challenged because uh, he allowed me to open that door and create the video. I think the exhibit was a success because you could see um, these three people's process. You could see how it manifested, clay pieces. Everybody uh, got together and, and worked to see how these three very different artists fit together. And since then, I've been in other exhibits, but I think that particular experience with the wheelwright was a turning point. Our exhibition program is also part of a larger program which includes substantial publishing. In fact, we publish more than any other museum our size in the country. The problem with our program is that it is literally bursting at the seams. The drawback is that this gallery in which we're standing is only 1,500 square feet, which is the size of a small home. Every six months when we dismantle this gallery to tear down and install a new exhibition, the gallery is closed to the public for a month. So for two months of every year, there is nothing for people to see. Our need is to build two more galleries to this museum, to double our space for the Changing Exhibition Program, and to feature our own permanent collection, which is seldom exhibited to the public. That gallery will be focused entirely on jewelry and related traditions in the Southwest, and will include more than a thousand masterpieces dating from the origins of silversmithing in the Southwest up to the present and featuring the, the work of many, many famous artists. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this, and we hope you will join us in our endeavor to expand the Wheelwright Museum.